Hello, Martin. Welcome to episode 31 of Illuminating Rounds. How are you doing? I'm all right, Dave. Thanks. How are you? You are looking like a man that has enjoyed his dinner. That's what, no, I don't mean that in a, <laughs> in a, a yeah, rotund I lost a couple of pounds last week, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I just meant you were smiling. I know you've had dinner, that's all. Yeah, I've just been for fajitas with my sister. Yeah. And, I, and I've just had Spanish chicken, so we are we are globe Very trotting. Latino. We are, yeah. Is that the right word for it? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, well, maybe, I guess. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right, <laughs> how have you been? Uh, well, do you know what? I'm fine, right as rain, yeah. And, and I've noticed a new addition to your... Um, Hobbit hole there. <laughs> yes, yes, that no, sounds so bad as well, by the way. And more untidy, and I decided that rather than have people tracking how untidy my yeah. sort of games room is becoming, yeah, I'm just going to stick that up. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Yeah, liked it. it actually Did... belongs to my son. He wanted it to make a. He called it. Um, it's kind of like man den or something. Okay, because he had to share a room, well, not a bedroom, but he had to share like a sort of a playing area with the. With his sister, so he had that to block her out, so he didn't have to see her. And and you and I will have known from our childhood that we have changed on a windy beach behind some of those things. Such things, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, and a few times, even without the benefit yeah. of those. Yeah. <laughs> with our mother swearing that she's seen it yeah. all before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, be I've seen bigger things than that. Maybe like, yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, Anyway, yeah. good, good. All yes. right, so. <laughs> Let's not talk about those traumatic <laughs> childhoods we we obviously had. Um, what are we going to do today, Martin? So I think the main thing that we're doing today, I've got no idea on the sequence, but I think the main thing we're doing is we're going through the games that were played in the semi-final of the tournament. The quarterfinals, yes. So, the quarterfinals, I think. Yeah. I always get that muddled up. That's all right. So, yeah, and we've got three of them. We've got three, three full logs. Um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. The guys that just recently completed the game didn't have a chance to put yeah. the log files together, but that's fine. We trust yeah. they played it, and you know, that's that's okay. Yeah. And we've gone through them all. We've had a look at them, and they're all yeah. very interesting, aren't they? Because they're all very different. They're all very different. The defences yeah. are different in all three. Yep. Yeah. And, in fact, the attack is different in all three. Exactly. So, so I'm looking forward to going through that again. Yeah, um, absolutely. We also should talk about uh, the Kansas City Wargamers, uh, Kansas City ASL Club, uh, Circled Productions. Yeah. Uh, they have kindly allowed us to put up uh, their most recent pack, the full ASL rulebook pack, um, which yeah, always it's always a bit of a, a bit of a mouthful. Uh, but it's a yeah. very very good pack. Um, we played Galician Getaway from it, uh, which is sure. on a, on a show yeah. a little while ago. That's yeah. now up for sale on the Scenario Archive, so you can yeah. download the uh the full pack uh digitally so you get the the pdf uh delivered straight to your inbox um mm-hmm. and and we solved a little bit of a problem with that today so that's all yeah. all ready to go and, and be downloaded so yeah. feel free to head over to the the full rule book. i'll put the link uh, do we know how many scenarios in that pack there know? are i believe there's eight scenarios but let me uh yeah. let me it's, it's just 17 dollars isn't it that's so, right that's and right no postage no postage, postage. exactly yeah. exactly um so now you've not played this week, is that right? You've not, you've not. No, I haven't. No. Okay. okay. Uh, my yeah, my regular opponent, well, Martin, other than you, of course, is uh, is is away. Well, no, he's he's going away. So he was sort of busy, and I was kind of busy. So we we called it off okay. this week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So eight scenarios in the the full rulebook page, mm. uh, and we'll definitely play another one of those um, yeah. to to kind of highlight that. But uh, Galician Getaway certainly gave us a good day's. Good day's fun, didn't it? It's a substantial scenario, isn't it? Yeah. And I got my whining. I got my money's worth of oh. whining. Oh, that's oh. a lie. But considering you winning all the way through, it was uh, non-stop whining. It was. Is there anything worse? There should be an award, shouldn't there, for the whingiest, whiningest win. <laughs> Listen, you can't spell whinge without win. So. <laughs> It's going to be my my, uh, my nickname. Yeah. Okay, all right. So thanks again to the Patreons. Uh, we got uh, we got a pack off to them. Uh, we'll do another draw next week uh, for something cool. So if you want to be a part of that, feel free to join the Patreon stuff. Uh, we're also going to run another tournament after this one. We also got the semi-finals this month, uh, in which mm. um, I am playing uh, Jean Eves, and there is uh, Richard is playing uh, Dwayne. Mm. So uh, those those games are going to happen. Um, so we'll uh, we'll find out next, uh, probably perhaps in two weeks' time, uh, yeah. how they get on. I'm I'm going to get up very early. You'll delight in the fact that I'm going to get up at five o'clock in the morning to play uh, to play my mm-hmm. game. But I'm happy to do it because I shouldn't say it, it's because it avoids 
playing PBM because that would upset Rob. But, <laughs> but yeah, so that's um, that's the plan. All right, so um, hmm. I guess uh, one other quick thing I did play, I played uh, Derek Cox, um, you know, good, yeah. good, good ASL player, Derek. Derek. Um, it was another one of those scenarios so we played, and I'll put it up on the screen now, um, but it's it's uh, we played at End of the Rope uh, from La Flanctier. Uh It's FT269. Uh, it's a bunch of Japanese holding onto a hill as the Commonwealth troops kind of come up the hill in the rain. Uh, and it's another one of those scenarios where I think Derek did nothing wrong. Um, I didn't particularly play it particularly well. And I won at a canter. And, and, and I don't want to sound boastful or anything. I mean, it, it, you know, I almost couldn't do anything other than just roll dice and, and just yeah, shoot. And win. Well, yeah. And it, and it wasn't, yeah. I don't think any of us had particularly bad luck or good luck. It just seems really, really tough on the Commonwealth. So um, mm. Derek was was superb throughout. He, you know, he's good spirits and, and enjoyed it. We were certainly, we were looking at it from, uh, he's kind of picking a scenario for like a Sunday morning tournament, one of the one of the like kind of later scenarios in the tournament for the, like the last kind of run up. And there's a, there's always yeah. a, a challenge there, isn't it? Because you might be like two players might be on like a, a dead even record trying to win the last scenario. So you want it to be, you know, meaty enough that a good player will be a lesser quality player. Yeah. But at the same time, it's got to be short enough that it can be played in the morning without yeah. um, without going long. So. Um, it did look it did look tough on the on the Commonwealth, and you can see there my my Japanese guys um, <coughs> tidying up fairly fairly well. But you know, yeah. like I say, Derek was Derek was good sport about it, so that was that was fun. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the Brickworks. Yes. Um. So the Brickworks, uh, if you've got it up there, Martin. So the Brickworks. I do indeed. Yeah. Uh, it's from the. Uh, is it from the Close Combat Pack? I can't remember which one is from. It's from March Madness. I think because it's yeah, which, which one? forty-seven. Which one of the? Do you remember which it's one? It's presumably the latest one. Uh, so it is uh, the players' pack. It's from the players' pack. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, much minus. Yeah, number forty-seven. Uh, so let's flick over to look at my uh, my game first of all. Yes. Um, and you can see. So what we've we got here, we've got the Russians defending, uh, and they are defending with six squads. Uh, those six squads are four six uh, four five eights, um, yeah. and they've got a forty five double L uh, anti tank gun here as well, which is not allowed to set up hip. Mm. The uh, the Russians have three factories to defend uh, at the back here. The Germans are coming on with thirteen squads. They're four six sevens. Uh, they've got a nine one, a couple of eight zero leaders. Uh, they've got a couple of medium machine guns, a light machine gun, and two Stugs. Uh, hmm. They've got the Stug 3Gs, so they're the ones without the machine guns apart from the uh, anti-aircraft 75Ls. Um, so five turns, only five turns. Uh, Germans have to capture all the factories. It's uh, Stalingrad, so it's 1942. Um, and we're going to see my game first of all. So <clears throat> things to point out, uh, the Russians were able to uh, rubble four locations. <clears throat> they're not allowed to rubble the, uh, the victory. victory conditions. Uh, but other than that, the, uh, the, the the Russians have to set up uh, effectively uh, on this hex row four and below. Yeah. So, you know, kind of set a fallback defense, really. Yeah. Um, so my attack, I was the Germans in this yeah. one against Jerry. Um, now, you didn't play in this round because of Jerry. No, thanks for that <laughs> timely reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so you'd have forgot to do the log file anyway. We would have, <laughs> never, we would have never seen it. Um, so here's, here's, my, um, here's my attack. So... The plan really was to send a Stug around the left-hand side, the, the Russian left, uh, to try mm -hmm. to interdict the the fallbacks, and then just push yeah. hard in the centre uh, with yeah. twice the number of troops that the the Russians yeah. have. You kind of got to feel that um, you know you're going to get a fair amount of um, uh, force that you can bring to bear. Um, and we saw there that the the anti-tank rifle is the uh, the first gets the first side shot onto the Stug, um, mm -hmm. and he's a little bit unlucky. Uh, to uh, I guess I guess didn't get lucky to take out the, the Stug. Um, but you yeah. can see that the Germans are just able to kind of push through and take pretty much Absolutely. no no, uh, no casualties at all, which is is a good start, I think. Um, you'll notice yeah. that I accidentally avoided Y2, which will be pertinent for a, a boar site <laughs> <laughs> question later on. Um, so a little bit of final fire, uh, but no, no real damage other than a pinned pin squad a little bit of breaking uh happens um 
and you know a little fast. It makes the, the Germans look pretty good here. Um, so a little bit of now, Jerry depends in place a little bit, doesn't he? Prep fires. He's he's not falling back quickly. That's here. right. Yes. Yeah. And that's a little bit of a surprise, isn't it? Because these these guys in the middle are looking um, fairly vulnerable here. Mm. Um, might have been might have been a little bit better to to fall back. Um, and this is one of the problems with um, having no one at the back here and, and the stug at the back is that when the uh, the guys break uh, in the back here, it's quite it yeah, it's not a great position in, in for example, a M9 to to route back to. Yeah. So routing forwards towards the enemy is is always going to be a bit tricky. <laughs> um, so uh, the Germans start to break already in the break, break the, the Russians here. Yeah. Um, and you can see that we're kind of now pushing home an advantage already, and mm -hmm. and trying to get across that road is, is going to look a little bit tricky again for the for the Russians. Um, now, uh, the what's quite interesting here. So the the Russians start with a hero as well, um, and this hero over here in. Um, uh, Z8 is actually looking quite out of the game. This this hero becomes the the real key piece of the uh, the Russian defence. Yeah. Uh, runs across like heroes do uh, <laughs> across the road, uh, jumping into um, into the factory to help defend. And the Russians get back through some uh, some good dashing across the road and some assault moving. Um, and you can start to see that actually the Russians have kind of uh, kind of got into a position that they probably would quite. Quite happy to be him, um, mm. albeit with a, a, a dropped anti-tank rifle. Um, and we get the first uh, tank casualty through street fighting. I get a little bit careless here. I think um, mm. I think at this point I thought well it was it was pretty much one, and I suddenly start making it a bit hard for myself. Um, so suddenly losing a half squad there, um, and. Uh, Getting a little bit scared yeah. to push too hard. I mean, with that nine-two street fighting, is gives them a very good chance of killing a tank. Doesn't That's it? right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you can see that uh, the, the kind of Germans have uh, what they've got the advantage of here is is just the kind of compression of their force. So fire groups can become quite quite brutal here, mm. um, and you can see that we are pretty much in position uh, to be able to take on these last three factories. Mm. Uh, or the last, certainly the, the, the two the two harder ones to, to capture in the middle. Um, so this is quite a clever move from Jerry. Um, I break the uh, the crew that were holding the uh, the gun, and Jerry immediately transfers the gun control to the hero, which effectively doesn't lose very much firepower from the gun at all. He just just drops it down to a uh, a captured use penalty, and I think maybe the rate of fire goes down by one, but um, but effectively it's. A gun is still up and up and running. Um, meanwhile, my uh, my guys over in the, the right side have captured prisoners uh, and are kind of dummy hunting just to try to avoid the uh, the sniper getting pulled across. Um, I just wanted that to be any snipers coming out to be quite useful. Um, and you can see really that the um, uh, the Russians have kind of they've got some good good strength with the commissar. Uh, in the in the building now the uh, the commissar is um, is optional for the um, uh, the Russians uh, so Jerry just choosing to to take the uh, the commissar I'm just looking to see whether that's a, no, it wasn't a balanced provision it was a it was actually just no no it's, uh, it's before it's before the end of uh, yeah. October so yeah he can yeah <coughs> um, and that's a good I think it's a good good choice I think that the commissar was excellent in uh, yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, so you can see uh, we've Excuse pretty me. much taken the the middle building, and we're about to take the uh, the far left hand factory uh, here. The bore site location is just being revealed as Y two up here, mm. um, which is an unbelievable line of sight. It, it absolutely was, and, and yeah, yeah. You, I, that's that's worth mentioning. Um, the yeah. the gun being. Um, Back in, I think it was. The guns in, moved, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it moved back. Like Nine. Nine. That's right. That line of sight is is excellent, and um, yeah, very sneaky line of sight. So kudos yeah. to Jerry for that that line of sight. Um, so the Germans pushing hard uh, on both flanks to try and capture uh, the guns. We're at the position now where we can start to throw 
throw guys at it. We've got uh, two turns, two turns remaining. Um, we've got a final fired uh, pinned half squad, uh, full squad here um, that is going to get jumped on by quite a lot of guys coming in. At this point, I've abandoned the tank to grab the extra crew. Um, so we've got a little bit of um, uh, prisoners taking on each other. And then we get the close combats. So the close combats are wrapped up fairly uh, very straightforward manner. The, uh, the large German force on the left-hand side take the first factory. The middle factory is pretty much available for, for capture. Yeah. And we've got the right-hand side just being manned by Hero. So at this point, Germans look in uh, pretty it's much... Almost certain to win, yeah. Exactly. Uh, but the Russians still have some tricks <coughs> left. Uh, so... Russians start running there. Um, the guys so they're are running for the S9 building, which I think the Germans have actually captured. Right, and, and, and they're going to... Yeah, exactly, they, but they will get it yeah. back if yeah. they can get a guy in there. And remember yeah. that the Russians get the last turn as well, uh, so you yeah. do have to be uh, a little bit careful. Yeah. Um, so we go into the uh, route phase, and then the advanced phase, the Russians jump in. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So... We've got um, a close combat that doesn't get resolved, and that's probably to be expected. Um, but the, the Germans now have a bit of a, an interesting choice here, um, because during their defensive fire, they have the option to obviously fire uh, the from P P nine into O O nine, and the problem is is that the the Russians the Russians have a nine morale squad and a ten morale leader there thanks to the commissar, um, and it's a it's going to be I think a thirty two up one shot, so likely to break things if i break my own unit in here they'll almost certainly die in close combat and that gives uh some prep fire shots and uh some defensive fire shots back at the from the russians back to the germans so it's a little bit of a difficult decision to make in terms of what to what to do here um we'll fast forward through the the, the fortified location turns up now martin you had an interesting comment about the fortified location in this scenario mm -hmm. Um, yeah. you kind of felt that perhaps tunnels would have been an option. And I think that's... It's certainly an option. So I think I, I, I think probably if I was setting up the defence, I would want to use the fortified building to create like a sort of a, a kind of a strongest point, if you like, to fall back to. But there is the option of having a tunnel. And the tunnel might solve the problem of, you know, that, that basic strategic problem that you got that you're either going to defend forward and fall back, mm. but the road is difficult to cross. Or... Right. <clears throat> You know, you defend, you know, right back and forfeit the slowing the Germans down right. at the beginning. You could potentially have a tunnel and that might be a sneaky way of getting yeah. the guys back. And and for example, then o, from 07 back into into P, uh, P9, for example. That's, yeah, exactly. That might be quite yeah. a nice... Uh, a nice one. I'm not sure if uh, can you can you go underneath? The, I'm not sure you can go under. Oh yeah, there's going to be no buildings there. So it's going to be straight. Go under anything. It's it's as long as that the only problem with tunnels is the elevation. But this right. is all the same elevation. Yeah. So and right. I think you can't go under water. That there's no water on this map. Yeah. So you and it has to be. It's got to be three hexes. Or it can be three two, That's right. or one hex. I think. I thought it was so, going to be three, but maybe maybe. Does it have to be exactly three? I, it may I, well th be. I think so, but but I'm, I'm, I could be wrong. But I thought it was so. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you could make that work, couldn't you? Right. Three would be ideal in this situation. Right, exactly. So uh, German turn, last German turn here. Um, so I choose not to fire at the, um, at the guys and uh, mainly to, to avoid what I figured was if I, if I fired in here and I end up routing away. And in theory, I could still advance into to close yeah. combat. So there was probably no big panic, but I didn't, I didn't want yeah. any, any kind of bad, bad things happening. I think it's yeah. just a safer thing just to put a little bit extra extra guys in here and i think and even I think, this yeah. go on i think this is i messed up here because i think i was really going for three to two and yeah. i managed to do seven to five which is <clears throat> not three to two at all not good enough yeah um so that, yeah. Was, that was not great um but in this close combat here i roll a double six and jerry pulls out a close combat which i must be i was surprised um now jerry has a better idea here which is actually ignore this building completely and actually go for this Middle, Correct, um, yeah. middle factory, which is probably a, a, a much better idea from him, and and it got me a bit nervous for the last turn. Um, <laughs> so we can see um, I capture the the final building here. Uh, so at the moment I'm I'm winning. Um, it's the Russian last yeah. turn to try and grab that building back. So we get the conscripts running 
um, mm-hmm. and get blown out the window uh, or go out of the water. And then uh, the um, the final, the commissar, which to be fair, I mean, you know, you, you eight morale here or nine morale, sorry, uh, coming yeah. in. Right? It's not yeah. not terrible that they might shrug it's off. Worth trying, yeah. It's got to be worth trying. <clears throat> and of course, we get the pin. That we, um, he was never going to capture the building he was in, was he? he was, that's uh, right. That's right. <laughs> And then, of course, at this point, oh, sorry. yeah, no, no, and that's it. And at this point, with yeah. the pinned pin squad or the broken squad here, yeah. uh, we've we've managed to um, uh, win because of the commissar can't win the, the yeah. factory back again. But in the end, it was it was it was relatively close. Yeah. And what, one of the things I hadn't caught on to when I watched this through with you earlier is, of course, that there's only plus one in the factory. So that that fire from O nine yep. into P nine would have been. Only a plus one. It would have been late plus one, which would be, exactly. would be devastating, obviously. Exactly, exactly. And with a reasonably good chance as well, yeah. Right, exactly. So let's Excellent take game. a look at the next game. All um, right. Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> this is uh, Richard Webb against Paul Legg. Paul so, Legg attacking as the Germans, isn't it? I that's think. right, yeah, Paul attacking as the Germans. Yeah. So Paul is looking for two big flank attacks, and this is um, this is a pincer movement. In, a, in extreme, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. More of a more of a central defence as well from the Russians, um, who chose to uh, rubble all four buildings in the middle here. Um, we had a bit of a chat about what what the advantages were for the rubbling of the buildings, and, and we thought potentially some line of sights uh, that might be possible. So, for example, here in in R seven and uh, P seven, you've got the the ability to to see across the rubble here. And obviously, uh, we've got a rubbled area out here. Not quite sure. I suppose. I suppose you get a little bit of a better. I, I, I guess a bit of a better view if you want to pull back here, perhaps, and and shoot over. But I mean, it's not. Maybe from K10, I suppose, it's a little bit better across. But it doesn't seem to be a, a big, uh, making a big impact that rubble there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's yeah. let's take a look at how the uh, the Germans get on here. So it looks like an armored assault. Uh, oh, one thing to mention as well, um, that uh, Richard here has, uh, sorry, yeah, Richard has pulled the um, uh, the guns and, and has used uh, concealment counters as dummies to represent potential guns here. Um, the problem is, is that almost the first action of the game is going to be to reveal that gun. Um, so out comes the gun. And... Yeah, we had no effect, but yeah. uh, it, I would have... I'd have been nervous just at that moment that that yeah. gun was revealed. Yeah, so that's going to that's going to kill on a four, isn't it? And immobilise on a yeah. five. Uh, so it's definitely uh, definitely possible. Yeah, uh, unless you target to the infantry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Which is you know it was a good it's a good stack of, uh, of guys there. Yeah. Isn't it? There's yeah. there's uh, I mean what three three squads and a leader coming down, mm. um, but they've made huge progress. I mean you know you can, they're going to be almost into the There's still a fair bit of open ground to cover here though. I mean I suppose that's the yeah. The concern. Um, so now we've got some craziness going on at some point here. Yeah. Uh, we get some acquisition coming in, um, and then the advances from the Germans, and now we get the the craziness. So we get a uh, heat of battle here. The German leader ELR, uh, uh, heat of battles to a nine two. Yes, which is pretty good. It's obviously um, the, the the Allies have a sniper. In there oh, as well. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Uh, and we get a, uh, a a bigger sniper. So mm-hmm. what's going to happen? The sniper immediately finds this stack. <laughs> uh, the leader takes the six and is obviously killed. So I mean, I don't think he survived anything other than. I mean, that's probably the shortest lived nine two. Uh, yeah. And I mean, you know, we've now got the lost leader check as well, and I mean, it's just brutal, isn't it? From and it's modified with mine with the two, isn't it, instead That's of the right. one? Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely brutal. Mm. I mean, at this point, oh, you've got to feel, <laughs> got to feel for the Germans here. Yeah. Um, you know, now they're just gonna fire on them, and it, I think you you called it perfectly. This is your ideal counterattack point. You love you love the counterattack. <laughs> And I mean, you know, the, a, point, a pointless counter attack. Yeah, yeah. it's, <clears throat> but it's, oh, it looks tough now for the Germans, doesn't it? It's a nice move, though, with the, with the, with the smoke. Yeah, exactly. And being able to come back around <coughs> this, this left hand side of the, um, uh, of the, the you know, the, the outer building here, 
means that the Paul's still Germans... got strong forces on both sides. He's that's right. lost a bit by losing his force from the from the east, isn't he? From the that's top. Right. That's right. Mm. Uh, good use of smoke though from both the Sturgs. Mm. Like to see that. That was good. Yeah. Um, that comes the fire lane. Um, Russians pulling back. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, it looks it looks a tough not to crack already, doesn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Turn three here for the uh, for the Germans. Um, so it seems to me that um, that the Russians have got a lot back now, haven't they? They've managed. To, I mean, of course, we don't know quite what's dummy and what's real. He's, right. he's got a fair bit back, so he's contesting those two buildings now, right. isn't he? It's a significant yeah. force. That's right. Yeah. So the Russians get six concealment counters at the start, mm. and obviously yeah. Stark concealed as well. So. We know that the dummies are the. Uh, we we know about the the gun here. He's a dummy gun. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I mean, the personnel the Russians have got are very interesting. If you bear in mind, they can have a commissar, a minus two leader, yep. and a hero potentially yep. in a yep. fortified location on the, you know, in the Alamo or whatever. You yep. can. Uh, yeah. Now, what about this being sneaky, Martin? What yeah. what do you think about putting a uh, like a four five seven underneath? Mm -hmm. I, I, can you put a four five seven underneath two, two large concealment counters? Okay. Um, <laughs> well, if you know I, uh, if you know the answer to that, maybe maybe yeah. a YouTube comment or a. I don't know. I don't know. Because imagine just being convinced that's just a dummy stack, and then yeah. coming across, uh, you know, a four five or four five eight underneath it. Mm. Um, but yeah, anyway, as uh, so the Germans pushing both sides. But um, but it looks tough, doesn't it? It looks tough. There's two, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. two victory buildings to to try and take here. Um, and we start to see the kind of the push into the open ground. Uh, Russians break there. It looks like a final protective fire shot there with a, an eleven. Yeah. Um, in the Germans come from the top, but I mean that that sniper effect has has had a. A huge impact in the game, hasn't it? Because mm -hmm. imagine, you know, three and a half more squads on a nine-two coming down the centre as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And the thing is, that the Russians have a very high sniper number. I think it's a five. That's right. Um, I mean, you know, it's likely to be active. It has been active more than once, hasn't it? It's been a couple of, of successful sniper activations. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I mean, bunching like that, a leader and a squad with a, such a high sniper, I suppose, is always going to be risky. Yes. Of course, the the upside of that, he was able to move. All of his force a really long way. Yep. But yeah, the, the cost is that you know you've got three stacks. They've all got leaders in them. Um, very very easy for to, to have a sniper hit one of your exactly. leaders. Exactly. No, absolutely agreed. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Um, so we've got uh, what we've got here. So this is the German last turn for the Germans. Yeah. So this is really just a, a big push, isn't it, to try and get their yeah. centre centre building. He's just got to take all the final fire and just get yeah. in there. Yeah. Now to be fair, he's only he got. It's still winnable. Yeah. yeah, it's one squad and potentially mm. one other in here. Um, so not impossible at all. Mm. Um, and, you know, looking it's, good at this point, really. For the, it's, it's looking good at this point, yeah. So, so it's a good, a good comeback, uh, really, from the Germans. 100%. Um, I thought he was going to win at this point, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's encircled him, which is, which, is, which is good. He hasn't managed to reveal the concealed unit. That's right. Yep. Yep. Which I think is important. Yep. And I wondered if it was a dummy at this point when I first watched it through. Yep. Yep. But of course it's not. So in here we've got it's the nine nine two. It's the nine two, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is not what you want to find in a in a no. concealed stack. <laughs> now I guess he probably knew that, um, to be fair. Probably, um, yeah. Paul probably realised that. But it's probably yeah. um it's well it's it's definitely one of those things you can't you can't bump scout, can you? Because if you've got no. an own unit in there, you can't bump into exactly. this front reveal. And of course, so he's in a great sort of ambush position, isn't he? He's got a, he's got the concealment. He's got the minus two leader. Um, I'm not sure if he did um, ambush him, but yeah, but it certainly survives the uh, certainly the survived. Combat. Yeah, and so we go to the last last turn here, and the Russians just got to survive this close combat. Yeah, and they do, and so and that's the Russians the hold on. Yeah. But yeah. also very, very close. Yeah, absolutely. It's one yeah. of those scenarios where um, you can sort of say, you know, I would have wiped you off the map 20 seconds later. <laughs> but, but unfortunately, you've lost the scenario. Yeah. 
All right, okay, so that's that one. Uh, let's take a look at our last last one. Okay, so this is the uh, the last one here. Uh, so this is Piers Mason versus uh, Dwayne Deval. Um, and again, a very different setup. So uh, the Russians here deciding to take a very uh, rear-looking uh, defence. Uh, what do you think, Martin? What's, what's your thoughts on this one? Well, the first thing is, I think that there's a lot to be said for a rear defence, actually, because you've got... Um, it, it's still going to take the... You, know, you saw how you, when you were playing against Jerry, you made a lot of progress against quite a determined defence yep. in the first turn. Yep. Well, um, the Germans are going to make rapid progress, but they're not going to kill any Russians, they're not going to break any, they're not going to... You know, they're, they're, they're going to keep their force intact. Of course, it does see time. It gives the Germans more time, but it does it does mean that they end up with a full force defending the victory right. condition buildings towards the end. I think it's interesting. And, and I, oh, I, go on. yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. What I was going to say was um, what this kind of lends lends itself towards is a very a, a big problem at the end where you've got two big forces sort of facing yeah. off each other across a road, um, and with only five turns, it yeah. is it is a tricky one, isn't it? So this somehow is a, the Germans are going to break those units in, in stone buildings I mean yeah. factories whatever but they still got to be broken plus three TM potentially plus four right right um, exactly haven't they it's not, it's not straightforward and right. if you in fact if one of them's fortified they can't even advance in yep until they've uh, until they've made it possible to to advance in right with their firepower so I do think it's interesting now this now I'm not quite sure who's who's defending in this one uh so Dwayne is defending here Dwayne is defending um, yep. now he's used the um rubble very differently Yep. Um, he's used it at the back of the of the village. What do you think that he's trying to achieve there? Yeah, that's a tricky one, isn't it? I suppose yeah. it, it sl just slows the Germans down. I yeah, suppose. yeah, it definitely slows the Germans. And there is always the possibility of it rubbling into the street, of it sort of falling rubble going right. into the street, isn't there? Yep. Certainly for the taller, the taller buildings. Yeah, so it's falling you rubble. Could potentially limit the, where the tanks can go. You know, yeah, if, you, if you had a bit of luck with how it fell. Oh, fall, no, falling rubble isn't isn't uh, isn't applicable for this one. Oh, it's not so applicable it's in the story. No. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but you're right. Yeah. One other thing I thought with the Germans standing off a little bit is they have no machine guns. There's no fire lanes, so they are quite limited um, in, in in kind of using their force sufficiently to hold a much stronger German force back. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, here they come. Uh, here yeah. Come the just worth mentioning that the gully on the left hand side doesn't uh, doesn't exist by SSR. Correct. As well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and the, the players are aware of that. It's just the players are aware. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, nice, nice, strong mm. attack here. Um, mm. So now these guys here, by the way, um, score extra points for the perfect use mm. of many different vassal counters that I've not come across. We get the berserk, <laughs> uh, berserk guy coming in, but um, you can see the the movement count. No, that was risky. This was very risky, wasn't it? And this this line of sight is tight, isn't it? So this one here, we're going to see the line of sight here now. In fact, fact Pierce says he was starting to worry as soon as yeah, he moved it. It's, yeah, it's it's just blocked, um, and it's yeah. probably just worth showing you this line of sight. It is very tight. Um, yeah. So, but just... there are no hips. So for the most part of that run, he was completely safe. Well, it transpired he was completely safe. But um, you know it. It's it's worth running like that because there's no forward there's no forward defence. That's right. That's true. That's yeah. very true. That's true. And I think again, five turns. You know, it's not a lot of time. Uh, so You've you got have to. Move, to yeah, you have to move. Um, but on the flip side of it, not a lot of time to uh, to rally broken guys. You know, if they uh, if they do happen to get caught out in the open. Absolutely. Or back yeah. here, you know. Um, so it's um you know it's a nice uh, it's a nice attack. They're all. Nicely, um, nicely coordinated there. Apart from those guys yep. on the far left, which, which have done do a nice probing attack. Um, yeah. Pierce gets a nice double one here on the, um, on the Russians just to pin them, um, mm -hmm. and then we get our advances. Uh, this berserk squad here out in the open, um, mm. but I guess you know now, the thing is here you've got this potentially this fairly nice shot here, but you probably don't want to break your concealment, uh, firing at. A, berserk guy here you know with the stug yeah. looking down at you it's um it's a bit of a difficult decision there as to mm. to what to do there um so russians uh for the best part just skulk him uh they're very nice by the way if you saw this so the uh the stug firing the smoke to help the berserk guys yes uh, down the road at least uh, against, 
against these guys. And <laughs> Berserk guys get in. Uh, so there they are. In. I think they're half squatted though. Um, mm -hmm. Germans take some more breaks here. Um, here we get to the kind of that point where you know they're going to be starting looking across the road from each other, mm. uh, and it is it is just a little bit awkward, isn't it? It's uh, and actually maybe this is where sort of um, Paul legs attacking from the sides might be. Uh... A way of kind of breaking that that sort of yes. stalemate. That's right. Yeah, that pincer because they did. You've got nice cover as well along the back there. Absolutely. Three. Yeah. And once you're in stone buildings, they're really all the victory condition. Virtually all of them are connected, so you can go right. from one building to another, giving yourself yeah. cover as you advance. That's right. But That's this right. is this is a lot for the Germans to do now. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and although they're nicely lined up, you know yeah. those Russians. You know you can. I mean, I think this is this has been very good German play, mm -hmm. but this is difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which you know just means that, that you know that defender's doing a good job. Yeah, exactly. Now you've got two two guns still hidden at this point. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is which is uh, interesting. Um, you know, the Stugs are going to have to take chances, and it, and it looks like you know they can't get away from. You know, there'll be a side shot. Well, probably this is mm. actually a front shot, isn't it, at the moment? But um, potential side shot here if, if the if the gun is here. Mm -hmm. um, there's a double six there on the on the rally. Is that, is that, I don't know if that's a commissar in there. I don't know where the rally was coming in from. Is it here? Oh. But it's one of those scenarios where you know suddenly you know it's German turn four and the German realizes they've only got two turns to get yeah. into buildings. Um, and, the, and the Russians still strongly contesting all three victory that's positions right exactly at the yeah exactly you've got um so we know we know these are now dummies with a with a broken squad here yeah um these you know some guys back here that are looking okay um mm. uh, and then we've got the um this this building here looking very strong the v9 building yeah looking very strong another nice yeah. counter here here's the, the nice vbm counters that we like um so in they come. But again, with, um, you know, the, the last... I yeah. Go on. I didn't notice the Germans getting the hero. Yeah, that yeah, had, that was... The, the Russians get one with, with the OBA, but... Um, That's sorry, right. order of battle. Yep, yep. Um, and then, yeah, look, so then the, the Russians there on the... You know the penultimate Russian turn, mm. uh, breaking the guys there. Yes, the fortified building. Yep, yep. So in R nine. Yes. So yeah. So was he allowed to put it in the factories? Uh, it's not. It's not a factory. So it, just here, it's a separate, it's a separate building just outside it. So yeah. So would you have been allowed to put it in the factory? That's not. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that's that's actually a factory. It's it's, a, it's next to the factory. So if you look at the yeah, I know yeah. <laughs> oh, but, oh, but, he, but it's not you know you couldn't put it in the factory. Oh no no, you could have put it in, could have put it in the factory. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Yeah no, so he could have put it in the factory. I was just I oh was no no no. I'm sorry, he can't. May may fortify oh, right, one non factory yeah. location. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. you know what? Which also suggests that you. Oh now interesting. So if you can't fortify a factory location, can you make yes. your tunnel go to yeah. a fortified location? I go, so. go to a factory location. So yeah, I don't see how that SSR stops you from doing that. Yeah, same. Um, May fortify one non-factory location, and I think B twenty three point nine says that you can convert it to a tunnel. So as I, long I as it's not, so. yeah, as long as it's not specifically named or something. But I assume that non-factory is not named. I think if, if it gives you like a particular mm. hex, that's right. That is the rule. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> So in come the in come the Germans for the last sort of uh, VBM sleazing, um, but the the gun there doing a good job, um, giving them four on a four on a four. Tanks are coming in, um, and there's a there's a three coming in on the final fire uh, against these guys. Um, morale checks of <laughs> ten, nine, eight, uh, which is never all you want to see on a presumably a one check in there or something. No. Um, 
and at that point the game's the, conceded yeah yeah the, the game's over so yeah. three three really interesting uh yeah. interesting games um and we we got the last result in as well although i don't have that to hand but but that's in and we, we might be able to see that at another point um mm. So nice scenario. Well done for uh, the Kansas City guys for uh, Encircle Productions for for that scenario. Thanks for again yeah. for, for sponsoring the tournament. Um, so this one again in the uh, in the close combat in the players pack. Sorry, in the players pack. Uh, so feel free to uh, to grab this one. And this one we're hoping as well will be on the the scenario archive at some point to yeah. to pick up as well. I think it's very interesting that you've got three three different attacks, three different defenses, and all of them were winnable on the last the last turn. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All the, all, yeah. Exactly. Okay, Martin. So before we um, before we talk about what we're going to do next week, uh, you have been okay. busy. You have been busy doing a little bit of ASL work. Um, oh, that's true. That's true. I have done. Uh, I've done. I've begun to do. Well, I've, I've nearly completed uh, a kind of a a short. I say short. It's about an hour explanation of how to play ASL. Uh, runs through uh, runs through a game, and it's kind of aimed at people who've never played before. Uh, the, the idea being that. If you meet a guy and you're teaching them how to play ASL, you don't, you know, you 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 don't like just tell them about one set of rules. You know, this is how to do move. This is how to do fire. You you just quickly in about 20, 30 minutes run through all the rules, uh, and then you can explain for other things as you're playing. You know, and things as things sort of like crop up. So I've I've tried to sort of imitate that that way of kind of explaining how to play. So I've made this this video, and we're going to upload it hopefully in the next week. Yep. Um, my editing skills are just appalling, and so, so everything's taking a long time, and it's not going to look particularly professional. But I think it might be quite it might be quite a good way into ASL for something that's new. So you got some some guys interested in playing, uh, maybe maybe point me in the direction of this when we get it up. And I've watched this, and I was invested. I'm not joking. <laughs> we, you know, I, I don't. I mean, it's not. Oh, any... I agree. I've watched it more than once now, and I, I it's. It's it's a yes. bit nail biting. Who's going to win? It's, 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 a, it's a great game. So so what we're going to do as well is we're going to turn it into a scenario. So yes. um, this is a scenario as part of the illuminating rounds pack, if you like. But it's a training scenario, and it's just to, to kind of get people familiar with. Okay, well look, potentially even how do you read a scenario card? Well, yeah, what let's let's yeah. look at what a scenario card looks like as well, um, and play it all the way through from the scenario card to the scenario, and yeah. you know we can we can talk about how. Uh, how that turned out as well like afterwards. And we, but, we can make that available for a free download, perhaps, to go yeah. with the, the tabletop. Yeah, for the, pa- for the yeah for the patrons or whatever. Or we can do yeah, wh- yeah. whatever. But um, definitely yeah. Um, yeah, definitely for the um, for the, the guys that are trying to teach people how to play. I think it's a it'll be a great resource. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, on source Horsha next week, aren't we? So you're going to do a, your yeah. review of that. Yeah. So I'm going to do a proper review. I'm going to get the maps out and uh, the scenarios and, uh, and 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 talk talk a little bit of the campaign game and there isn't a campaign game, is there? Actually, no. But, there's uh, like a, yeah, yeah, sure. we're going to give it a proper proper review, proper yeah. look at it, um, and uh, we'll we'll probably play a scenario from that pack as well. That's right. That's right. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about superstitions in ASL, mm. and mm. we need some we need some feedback for this. So so yeah. if you've got superstitions in ASL from whatever they are. YouTube, Game Squad, whatever, Facebook, just let us know. We'll we'll see them. We'll talk about them. I'd love to hear. Do you have any superstitions, or should we talk about? It? Should we leave it until next? next time? Well, I suppose we should leave it until next time. But do you know what? I don't think I desperately do. I think I. The the only thing I I, I do think is that I sometimes know that I'm going to roll very low, <laughs> and I do. <laughs> And, and, you're, and do you know what? I think yeah. there's a little bit of empathy that is sort of between us because I think you know it as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, I, you know, so you you get into a streak, um, yeah. and and it's just I I've looked away. I've looked away before. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I, I'm sure you could feel that tension. <laughs> Where, absolutely. Do you know, it's, sometimes it's just I'm just absolutely confident. I get into a good streak. I'll literally I'll, I'll move into a terrible position. And you'll do a, I don't know, twelve down one, and I'm like completely relaxed. I do the morale checks, pass, 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 advance and fire, double one. You know, it's just, and I, I know it's going to happen. I know it's. I'm absolutely fine. I can do anything. I'm untouchable. It's brilliant. Uh, I, and, I love it. And not it. through skill at all. You know. So do you know something? Like that. I'd, I'd, I'd rather be. Like that, but... I'd rather be lucky than good, Martin. You know, and that's oh, that's the thing. You, uh, you, you got that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen. Until then, Martin. Thanks very much for your time. 
uh, thanks guys for, for watching yeah. and till we, uh, see, till we see you all again yeah, yeah. check out the uh, the the, uh, the Kansas City guys on uh, on the archive as well all right cheers guys yeah. all the best bye-bye bye-bye